The deadline passed today in the most ambitious attempt ever to reduce greenhouse gases. So the climate meeting of 196 nations gave itself one more day. The French foreign minister hosting the summit in Paris says that a non-binding agreement is still possible. One thing that is helping is the latest advances in technology. And Mark Phillips got a glimpse of the future for tonight's Climate Diaries. On the wild north coast of Scotland, the pounding waves have attracted painters and poets and colonies of happy seals. Now they're attracting something else. Engineers in search of power. Up here where the Atlantic meets the North Sea, the tides that funnel between the mainland and the islands are some of the strongest in the world. And David Taff is managing the biggest ever project to try to catch and tame that power. The Atlantic's that way. Yeah. The North Sea is that way. Correct. Yeah. And the tide runs back and forth here. Correct. Four times a day, twice in each direction. Yeah. Already the cables have been laid on the seabed to bring the power ashore. And the first underwater turbines are about to be lowered and connected. When complete, a large field of turbines will produce as much electricity as a big coal, gas, or nuclear plant on shore. Speaking as an engineer, do you find it kind of amazing that this power source has been sitting out there. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a good point. It's a, it's a wonder uh, people, haven't, people haven't looked at this, um, this site and other sites like it before. It's a wonder because tidal power has advantages the other renewables lack. Solar power only works in the daytime. And wind power, which many consider an eyesore, is an expensive waste of space when the wind doesn't blow. Tidal power is reliable says the CEO of this project, Tim Cornelius. Tidal has one very distinct benefit. Uh, it's virtually 100% predictable. And virtually 100% invisible. One of the advantages of tidal power over wind is that you can't see it. Instead of a big turbine on the hillside, these are hidden under the waves, invisible, even to these guys. There is a drawback. The costs of developing the new technology have been high until now. But with a lot of know-how being borrowed from the wind and the offshore oil industries, those costs are coming down. The best sites around the world are yet, uh, yet to be developed. And so we'll have a, a real boom over the next 10 to 15 years of uh, sites around the world being developed. Among the North American sites being considered, San Francisco Bay and the furious tides that run under the Golden Gate Bridge, and the Bay of Fundy, where the world's biggest tides could help power the East Coast, all without disturbing the view. Mark Phillips, CBS News, Cape Ness, Scotland.